lift your hands and let's declare it to him tonight. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day. the voices declare sing I am your own. I am your own. till the day you will come Jesus I am your own. I am your own. I am Jesus Declare it from the depths of your heart. Sing, I am your I am your Till the day you Jesus, I am your One more time, declare tonight. Sing, I am to him tonight. Just lift your hands. Just be still. Every time we sing these songs, we are making a solemn declaration to Him. These are not just songs. These are confessions. That Lord, nothing in this life has the capacity to claim ownership over me all that i am and all that i have is yours my life is yours my ministry is yours my family is yours my relationship is yours my finances are all yours my resources my job my career everything everything there is absolutely nothing that I will withhold from you. Absolutely nothing. Jesus, I am your own. Till the day you will come. Jesus. 
Jesus, we are your own. Till the day you move, Jesus, we are your own. Come on, sing it with me. Till the day you In a hundred years or in ten years, declare to him to the day. Tonight I pray, let us experience your presence. Draw us to deeper fellowship with you. Take us to another level with you. I pray that your word will transform our hearts. I pray that you change our lives. And I pray that under this atmosphere, everyone that came with a burden... Everyone that came with a sickness, everyone that came with a need, will be delivered, will be saved, and will have their needs met. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you just greet somebody by your side, briefly? And take your seat in the presence of the Lord. My soul longs and even faints for you. You know that song? You know that song? My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God for the living God Eddie James incline your ears be trembling and yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face I'm longing longing for you come on sing I need you
that the protocol for this meeting is the presence of God there is something that talk cannot do there is something that preaching ministering the word having a good service cannot do you cannot have a good service outside the presence of God so when you see us sing we are not ashamed to declare how much we need him because it is songs like this that has the capacity of drawing God your direction. There are times when all you need is just a visitation of his presence. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go. The reason why he was glad was because what distinguishes that house from every other house was the presence of God. I don't know about you. But I'm not tired of the God that I have. I'm not tired of the dimension of Him that I've received. I bless God for all that He has done. We see numerous testimonies every week, week in, week out. But above everything, my desire is not just those things. My desire is the very presence of God. I want to be one with Him. I want to come into full communion with Him. I want to become intimate with him. That's my desire. I'm not chasing after God because of what he will give me. No. I think he has given enough. And he will still give. But our pursuit of God is not because of what he will give. Our pursuit of God is because we realize that without him we are nothing. That's why I love that song. I need you. I need you. The psalmist says, my heart and my flesh cries out. When was the last time your heart truly yearned for God? When was the last time you went to pray and your desire was just his presence? Not because you wanted to fulfill a spiritual exercise of praying. You know, we have a lot of people now who pray just so that they can be found righteous, that they have prayed. Let me tell you something, friends. Life is empty without him. I'm telling you. You wait until you have gotten some level of breakthrough. You wait until God has given you some material benefits. That's when you realize that the more of these things you have is the more that you would want. But the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, I shall not want. So the only way out of want and lack is when you have him. When you truly have his presence. When you become one in intimacy, that's where God wants to take us to. That's why we come here week in, week out. It's like a syllabus we are going through. It's like a curriculum that we are learning. And there is a part of this system of education that has to do with the presence of God coming in contact with your life and transforming you to become like Him part-time. Ha! Huh? Da 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 
Can we just soak for one minute in this atmosphere of the presence of God? Just soak, just enjoy. You don't need to stand. Just enjoy it. Sixty seconds. I just want you to declare your love to him. Tell him how much you need him. You can say it in other tongues. You can say it in your words. You can just say it by a, by a position of silence. Just imagine the Lord Jesus standing before you, the lover of your soul, the shepherd of your soul, and express your love to him. How we love you. Kabarada Mashakaba. Eda Baroko Roskalabas. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship. It is you we live for. We are not confused about our pursuit. 
We do not pursue a man. We do not pursue a system. We do not pursue mundane things. For the things that we see are temporal. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Our love is yours and yours alone. We bless you. We bless you. Just enjoy his presence. There is something that happens when you are exposed to this kind of atmospheres. You may not understand in your mind what is happening. But there is something going on in your system. For some of us, God is reordering our priorities. For some of you, the burden you came with is being lifted. Oh, how we worship you, Lord. thank you God is removing heavy burdens that's what I hear the Spirit say God is removing heavy burdens whatever you came here with as a burden is being taken off it's been removed there is liberty in his presence there is freedom in his presence total emancipation but where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let's go to the Word briefly. Wow. such a strong 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 release of his presence in this place such an uninterrupted flow of the very presence of God in this place and I thank the Lord I thank the Lord for what he's about to do and for what he has been doing with us I want to assure you that when you come into this place even when you don't participate in the service just sitting down under this atmosphere a lot is happening to you so much so that it will take you a while when you go back to realize the transformation the reconfiguration that must have happened to your spirit your soul and your body nothing exposed to the presence of God remains the same Whenever you are exposed to his presence, he changes you and makes you conform to his image. The image of his glory, which is Jesus Christ. And I trust that the Lord will do us good tonight in Jesus' name. Second John chapter 1. Second John. Amen. 
I bless God for all the testimonies. I thank Him for all that He's doing. In our midst, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. And I know that God has chosen to reveal His faithfulness to us as a people. It's not because of our righteousness, it's by His grace, His tender mercies, and His compassion that the Bible says are new every morning. Amen. And I just give Him all the glory and trust Him to do more. Second John has one chapter and then we'll just read verse 1 and 2 and then we'll read third John from verse 2 to 4. Amen. Second John chapter 1 from verse 1. The elder to the elect lady and her children whom I love in truth and not only I but also all those who have known the truth because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us for ever whom I love in truth not only I but also all those who have known the truth because of the truth which abides in us so we see that the truth abides inwardly and then the Bible speaks of the truth that will be with us. These are two dimensions of God finding expression in the lives of believers. I want to teach briefly tonight. The Bible says the truth abides in us and it will be with us. Abides in us speaks of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit in a believer that brings the fulfillment of the manifestation of Jesus Christ in that believer. It is the Holy Spirit that reveals or brings the reality of what it means to have Christ in you. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the Holy Spirit comes to tabernacle in us believers to bring about successive expressions of the life of Christ that is inside of us but the Bible says that this truth that abides in you will be with you it speaks of a higher dimension of intimacy it speaks of a a greater level of communion it is not just enough to have Christ in you but it is also enough to come into a communion a fellowship to come into a level of intimacy and bonding Jesus was speaking in John chapter 14 verse 16 he says I will send you another comforter who abides in you and shall be with you in other words it was God's desire that we will come into a level of intimacy a level of communion with this truth that dwells inside of us that's why he says whom I have known in the truth and you shall know the truth that knowledge there is just is not just uh, uh, um, relinquished to an understanding of facts that knowledge there is an experience the truth that becomes a living personality that finds expression in and with a believer this truth that will abide with us for how long forever i'm saying this because we need to really begin to understand our major goal and pursuit as believers last week was miracle service and i thank god for all that he did i mean we saw the power of god flawlessly but i'm afraid that if we don't go back to begin to disciple and train the people of god very soon a lot of believers who have their mindset and their ideology warped warped in the sense that they will be one-sided in their understanding of the pursuit of this life of this race that we call christianity many believers already think that all that you follow god for is the miracles that he will do 
and if we are not careful to bring us back to teach us that there is a reason for this pursuit there is a reason why christianity was galvanized there are over 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 a million religions in the world and almost every religion is tied to a book and a historical patriarch only christianity gives us the opportunity to come into a knowledge and a, a personal experience with the god that it professes only christianity promises a level of fellowship and intimacy it is only in christianity that you find that the god can make himself personal and make himself real to an individual not to a group of people alone are we together so we need to come back and once in a while remind ourselves that this pursuit is unto a level of fellowship a level of communion he has called us to be with him he has called us to know him he has called us to experience his realities one stage after another the bible says in first john chapter 2 it says i write to you fathers who have known him from the beginning that there is a level you will get to in your walk with god where you can be classified as the fathers that john was talking about not fathers as in age physical or biological age but fathers as in a man like abraham that has walked with god and come to a point where he knows god imagine what the lord said about abraham he said can i hide from my servant abraham that means there's a level of intimacy that a man can come with god where god no longer hides anything the bible says the secret thing belongs to god he's god because of the mysteries that are interwoven and you know you know you know summed up in him but that a man can pursue god to a point where it becomes difficult for god to hide or to restrain the revelation of himself to that man that's our goal as christians that's our pursuit we must never never misplace the priorities we must never never begin to think that it is all about miracles it is all about signs and i'm not opposed to that i believe in the god that does wonders without numbers both he brought them out of egypt instead of taking them straight to the promised land he took them to the wilderness he took them to the same place he met with moses so that they can meet with him the truth that will be with us forever third john verse 2 to 4 third john verse 2 to 4 those of us that are streaming online god bless you and i want you to know that you are connected to everything that god is doing here and god will reach out to you in jesus name verse 2 can we read it at, is it on the screen okay i wish it was on the screen we would have read it together but let me just read it okay let's read it it's on the screen popular verse one to go beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers verse 3 go on let me read now for i rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth so god is not opposed to your prosperity in fact the bible says it is my prayer that above all things you will prosper you will prosper financially you will prosper materially you will prosper in your health it says but even as your soul prospers however he has this to say in verse 3 that i rejoice not because of your prosperity but because there was something about your prosperity that made it accurate that made it correct that made it conform to god's ultimate plan and purpose for you he says i rejoice greatly when brethren came and testify of the truth that is in you 
just as you walk now there are two expressions there the bible says of the truth that is in you and then it speaks of walking in the truth in other words the testimony of the brethren about the truth that is inside of you the truth there is jesus the christ the trust the testimony of brethren the testimony of your environment the testimony of people around that christ truly dwells inside of you is your lifestyle your conversation your manner of living which conforms to the truth that you profess that is inside of you i wish somebody's getting what i'm saying that that testimony is based on your walking in the truth that's the reason why if truly a man is born again and has the life of god in him has the life of christ in him by reason of the holy spirit over a period of time something will be reconfigured in his existence that he will not need to tell people i'm a christian but that his approach to life his manner of living and everything he does will become a report card a testament of something that has begun to become the government of his soul many people think christianity is all about having the, they, they say christian name there's nothing like christian name i hope we know there's nothing like christian name most of those names are jewish names in the bible and jews are not christians not all jews are christians i hope you know i don't have time i would have shown you a little of eschatology that even the jews they will have to believe the gospel that we preach for them to go to heaven even if you be a christian by name that's that's not a proof that you are a christian no there is something that will happen to your life that will become a testimony a testament it becomes a voice that is louder even than your confession that this one the bible says it was in antioch for one year paul and barnabas assembled them and taught them the word taught them the truth and they made a practice of all that they have heard and the bible says it was in antioch that they were first called christians why they looked at their lifestyle they looked at what they do or what they did when they were in the marketplace they looked at them when they walked on the street they looked at them in, in their classrooms they looked at them in their places of work amongst their colleagues in their neighborhood and they discovered that the only person who has a life that is being simulated by this one was christ that's why they were called christians the word christians in the original hebrew means little christ the bible says i rejoice when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth next verse verse 4 i have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in what so this is god's greatest desire thank god for the miracles thank god for provision thank god for supply thank god for prosperity thank god for every material and physical benefit that we have found in him but god says his greatest desire is that he wants to hear that my children walk in the truth and that's the topic of tonight's teaching walking in the truth or walking in truth walking in truth walking in truth is a lifestyle that simulates an accurate expression of the christ an accurate expression of the christ it is god's prescribed pattern for existence everything that god is has been personified in christ and if truly you are walking in the truth your life becomes a direct reflection of a life that can only be found in christ so your life becomes a simulation the word simulation is borrowed from you know a military is a military terminology 
like in the Air Force, when they want to train pilots, there is a place they take them to. They call it simulation room. So when you enter that place, it is as though you are in a plane on the air. So that everything that happens to you there is like you begin to learn everything that you should do when you are on the air. They do that before they put you in the main aircraft. So when we walk in the truth, it means our lives become a simulation. It becomes an exact replay of that which was or that which found expression in the life of Christ. And Jesus himself said, I, I do what, my, what I see my father do. That means if your life is truly expressive of the life of Christ, you will totally be in the will of God, pleasing him in every way. Walking in truth. Walking in truth is a wholesome dedication to the truths of the kingdom. A wholesome dedication to the truths and the patterns of the kingdom that begets a life pleasing to God. A wholesome dedication to the truth. The patterns, the ideologies, the systems of the kingdom there is a civilization by which the kingdom of god operates this kingdom we are talking about is a culture it's not just a place alone it's a culture just like you have Igbo culture yoruba culture and culture is the way of life of a people that's how the kingdom is the way of life of god's children that's why he says thy kingdom come thy will be done in he didn't say on earth in earth in earth means in this body that my life becomes a testament becomes an expression of the culture that exists where you dwell that's what it means a wholesome dedication not one leg in one leg out like we find you know that's the problem in church that's the reason why this kind of messages many mainstream believers will not like it Last week was miracle service. The whole place was jam-packed. And for some of them, the next time they will come is the next miracle service. You know, Gotaya, when will you stop chasing after those small, small things and chase after God? A wholesome dedication where you begin to pattern your life by the help of the Holy Spirit. Your life now becomes a reflection of the scriptures your life becomes a reflection of the word of god it goes beyond a word that you read every morning and your life now becomes a total expression you devote your existence to displaying this culture that is what it means to walk in truth and john said he says i have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth let me tell us something in as much as the Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper. It is one thing to prosper. But before God, that prosperity will be measured by its conformity to the standards of his word. That's why truth before God is not accuracy of your statement. Truth is not just correct, correctness of information. Truth is actually the source. God told Moses, speak to the rock and it will bring out water. Out of annoyance, Moses struck the rock. And the Bible says, water came out. Isn't it? Now, to the children of God and uh, Israel, they didn't know what had happened. All they knew was that Moses had prayed to God, God had answered, and water had come. But God went to Moses and whispered to him, he said, because you did not honor me before these people. You didn't do what I asked you to do. The Bible says to obey is better than to sacrifice. And to hearken better than the fat of rams. It was not just about bringing out water from that rock. It was about your obedience and conformity to the word. Because of that, you won't see the promised land. So thank God for the one million. As you claim, God bless you. But who really was the source? Thank God. I've been trusting God for a life partner. Now God has shown me somebody and I'm in a relationship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where 
or what is the source of that person because these days people meet life partners in nightclubs and in parties and they claim that God sent the people to them from where that's what's happening nowadays we live in a time where if we don't if we don't consciously walk by the truth if we don't consciously walk in conformity to what God is saying let it not just be about results results result but that it is result that is accurate with the patterns of God if they had followed another dimension they would have still built the tabernacle but the glory of God would not have inhabited it because God instructed Moses he says ensure that you build the pattern the, the goal was not just raising a structure the goal was replicating a pattern a pattern God is a God of pattern and truth is when you walk wholesomely dedicated to those patterns even in ministry there is a way by which you can walk in truth and walk in error that I can have a gift to see into people's life And say what I see does not mean God sent me. That's not the yardstick, no. No. You know, it's very easy. If I come and just say, this is your name. Your name is so, so, so. Your son name is so, so, so. That's enough. For some of you, the moment you get that one, ah, then there's a problem. And I'll say, okay, the Lord says, give 50,000. And that problem will be solved. Some of you are laughing. That's, you have gone there before. You know what I'm talking about. You remember the playlet they did here during generational courses that that series now because i got his name and his son name he's emotional yeah that's where satan gets us one moment we switch into our emotions and because i got his name and his son name that means the fifty thousand really came from god meanwhile that fifty thousand was a confession of my lust and my greed for money and most times i've seen those kind of people come to me after all those things they still go back and they are the same so if i'm truly walking in truth there is a pattern that will be replayed in my life that you will know that this is not just ministry of results alone but this is a pattern that has been consciously kept Even in your business, there is a way by which you can walk in truth. If you defraud and get money and bring the tithes to church and give testimony just to try to justify what you have done, doesn't mean that you, it, was, it was gotten in truth. If we don't go back to begin to obey these things, I'm afraid that we are coming to a time where Christianity will become mixed. Very soon we will no longer understand the patterns and the culture of the kingdom we are living in a time where almost anything goes and that's why the bible says that even the elect will be deceived so i have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth walking in truth implies a few things that i will give us tonight and then we'll pray walking in truth i've already defined what it is and i want to i want to show you the implications when your life is truly walking in conformity to the life of christ to the truth that is in god what are the implications what are the things the indicators by which we will know i give you a few and then we'll pray tonight number one walking in truth implies the truth of who you are in Christ this truth that we are talking about number one it is the truth of who you are in Christ in other words your kingdom identity now I'm not just talking about new creation realities no many of us know it many of us have read it but many of us are not conscious of it 
Walking in truth is first of all the truth of who you are in Christ. Understanding that the moment you came into Christ, there was a change in your identity. There was a change in your DNA spiritually. And you have taken up another identity that is not after your flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, Henceforth know we no man according to the flesh. So you gave your life to Christ, you are still the same person physically. But there has been a change in your spirit. And that change becomes your identity. It becomes the reason for your expression. And it becomes the, 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 the way by which the people around you should know you. The truth of who you are in Christ. Who are you? Is a question I'm asking. Many of us don't really know that. Many of us only know coming to church, following the motions, but coming to a consciousness of the identity you have derived in Christ. That if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. As simple as that scripture sounds, I will know whether it has eaten into your consciousness when the enemy attacks you. If you are truly conscious of the truth of who you are in Christ, the enemy will not remind you of your past and you, you will give in to misery and depression. No. There are many of us here that your walk with God is being truncated by consistent reminder of your past that Satan brings. And I just came to tell you, if that is happening to you, then you really don't know the truth of who you are in Christ. This is, I'm not, it's not just a scripture. I'm telling you about a reality. This is where Christianity starts from. There's one song we used to sing those days. There is a great change since I'm born again. There is a great change since I'm born again. There is a great change. Change. In case you give your, gave your life to Christ a long time, you know this song. There is a great change since I'm born again. That change is the truth that we are talking about, that we are examining. That change happened first in your spirit. And then you must be brought into a conscious knowledge. That's what the Bible means when it says, let your mind be transformed. That your soul must, must, must be trained and educated to understand the reality of that new man that is in you. Which is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, blessed be the God of our Father, Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So the truth of who you are in Christ is that you carry a blessed mentality. I am the blessed. See, listen, let me tell you. When you carry that mentality, you discover naturally that you no longer pursue God for what he gives you. That's what I call opportunistic Christianity. Miracle, 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 miracle. As far as I'm concerned, the greatest miracle for a believer is the miracle of transformation where your mind begins to be conformed to the image of Christ. Every other one is an addition. So when the Bible says, I have been blessed with all blessings, I walk around with a blessed mentality. That means my job is not my source. God is my source. It will even affect your giving. You will give lavishly. Why? Because you know that you are blessed already. And your blessings are in riches of riches in glory, which is in Christ. Meaning that they are not, they can never be exhausted. That way when somewhere you are in a napep and you come down and realize that they've stolen your purse. Instead of you going moody and depressed for three days. You know there are people like that. They stole your purse. Ha! Ah. Some people will even go and gather everybody in the house who must fast and pray today that money must come out that money must come out but a blessed man knows that whatever left my life as long as it is not God it will come back yes yes I was praying one day and I was just 
loving the Lord in my time with the Lord, telling him how much I love him. And the Lord said, You love me? I say yes. He said, Are you sure you love me? I say yes, Lord. To the best of my knowledge, oh, I love you. The Lord said, Oh, yeah, give me hundred thousand. I say, Abba. We don't pass this one now. I will give you. And I did. And I realized that when I did that, unlike before, I was not waiting for the seed to, to bring the harvest. You know that kind of giving when you give? You now consciously wait for the harvest that, oh boy, this harvest must come. Oh. No. Say after me, I am blessed. Yes. Yes. And the Bible says they are with riches in his glory. Meaning that God can give you a car. But that is not the only way by which you quantify your blessings. God can give you a house. But a house is not the only way by which we measure your blessing. Your blessing is a spiritual reality that exists with God. And it is from there that every material thing that comes to you comes. The Bible says, I am the head and not the tail. So you walk around with a success-driven mentality. My father and the Lord used to say, when you walk around with that mentality, if you go for a job interview, 200 people and they are looking for only 10, just start praying for the remaining 9 because you are the first. You understand? No, you didn't understand. You can even begin to rally the people and say, let's, let's pray for the other 9. Let's pray because me, oh. Somebody said that's pomposity. No, that's just confidence that stems from a man that is walking consciously in the truth of who he is. It's a truth. It may not be showing around you physically because truth before time seems like a lie. But someday time will catch up with the truth. That's the reason why God is exposing you to his word. A time will come as you keep exposing yourself to these things. You come into the conscious knowledge. A time will come when your soul has naturally been conformed to these realities. Your life will naturally change and adjust to what he says. A great man of God says, if you take your mind to the future, it will come back and take your body along. Walking in the consciousness of the truth. Many of us struggle with identity crisis. As a matter of fact, that was, the, 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 that was what led to the first sin. Satan fell. Why? Identity crisis. He said, I will exalt my throne above the mountains of the north. And I will be like the most high. I will be like the most high. He was not comfortable with whom God had made of him. Maybe because he was not fully aware of who he was as God had made him. That was why he came to the garden through the serpent. And what was his, his statement to, to Eve? He said, God knows that the day you eat this fruit, you shall not surely die, but you shall surely be like God. Excuse me. Didn't the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. If God has made you in his image and likeness, what's the need to be like him again? Identity crisis. That's why they fell. That's why Satan will come and tempt somebody to take bribe. Every time Satan comes with a temptation, check out your identity first. Those days in my secondary school, when you stoop so low, there is a slang, there is a word we used to use. They say you don't burn your rep. You know, rep is the word reputation. They say, ah, you don't burn your rep. Ah, ah. That means you stoop so low for something. Every time Satan brings a temptation, check out who you are first. And realize that if you give in to that temptation, you are stooping low. The truth of who you are. The truth of who you are. Even in ministry, the cure for competition. The cure for competition in the body of Christ is when we truly understand who we are in him. You know, there are two dimensions of this. First of all, there is the, um, there is the general dimension, which is the truth of who we all are in Christ. We call it new creation realities. But then, when you stand on that foundation, 
the Holy Spirit brings you into an experience that reveals to you who you are in Him. No longer just the general knowledge of who we all are, but who you are in Him. He told Jeremiah, he says, Say not, I am a child. For before you were formed, I knew you in your mother's womb. And I sanctified and ordained you a prophet. But who was Jeremiah then? Jeremiah was a priest serving in a land. But God told him that before you were born, you were a prophet. Some of you, the greatest revelation you need now is a full definition of who you are. That's the reason for encounters. Encounters is not just to show you who God is or to daze you with all that He exists where He dwells. But every dimension of God that is revealed to you in an encounter is actually the dimension you were created to express. Oh, you didn't hear me. So if God appeared to you as fire, it means you were a vessel of fire. That's it. What did he tell Jeremiah? He said, I will make my word in your mouth like fire. And I will make these people like stubble, like wood. So that when you speak, the word will burn them. No wonder in Lamentations chapter 1, he wrote in verse 13. He said, he sent down fire in my bones. How did that fire enter his bones? By the word that came to him. John the Baptist knew who he was. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. My question tonight is, do you know who you are? And are you walking in the truth of who you are? Because I tell you the truth, I show you a life that is immune to all that the enemy can throw at it. When you are conscious of who you are, even in the midst of predicaments and situations, the Bible says, yea, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Then he went on to say, that I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, or demons, principalities, or powers, or this life, or the life to come, shall separate us. Why? Because we know who we are, that we are more than conquerors. Ask your neighbor, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Ask your neighbor. What was the response? Because if his challenge is 200,000, because of 200,000, he has not eaten for three days. He doesn't know who he is. Many of us allow material needs to define who we are. You become moody just because you don't have money on your phone to make call. That day becomes a sour day. The Bible says, Hamakala baradaba. He said, look at, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap. They neither spin nor toil. He said, but my hev- or your heavenly father in heaven feeds them. He said, how much more shall he not feed and clothe you, O you of little faith? Faith. I've seen people that are depressed because they are not married. I've seen people, because of the predicaments, the problems they went through, they used it to define who they are. I've seen people who make confessions like, my sickness. Ah, did they write your name on top? Say, that my thing, that my thing, you don't don't start again. That's why I come out that day. You don't, you don't. No, 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 come on now. The Bible says, ye are God's. And children of the Most High. You know the meaning of that statement. It means that you are you are you are the expression of God in a smaller container. Colossians chapter two verse nine. He say, "In Him, speaking of Christ, dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily." Then He says in verse ten, "And you are complete in Him." If he has the fullness of God in him and I am complete in him, guess what? I have the fullness of God inside of me. Now, many of you don't know that the the dimensions of God that you carry. Many of you. Walking in the truth. The truth of who you are. The truth of who you are number two 
Walking in truth implies the consciousness of God the Father as your source. Hmm. I like this one. The consciousness of God the Father as your source. And Jesus Christ as your Lord. It means walking in the consciousness of God the Father. Walking in the consciousness. It's not just enough to know it. But be conscious of it by default. It becomes your mindset that God is your father. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, I believe. Is it chapter 10 or ch verse chapter 11 now? Give us Luke chapter 11. I think it's Luke 11. From verse 10. Let me show us something there. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it, it will be opened. Go on to verse 13. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, Jesus is asking a question. Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give even the Holy Spirit? Walking in the consciousness that God is my source. So the next time somebody threaten you in your place of work or in your job, you just laugh. And tell them I am that I am brought me here. And he's the one that can determine when I will go. You heard the testimony of that lady. Somebody just came to the mother and said, stop coming to work. From where? How? Just like that. You know that some people that the enemy positions in our places of work, I'm not saying everybody, but just some few people that just want to be like the Alpha and Omega. One arrogant boss that just wants you to know that you know that you know that you know that he is your benefactor. For what? Is he not a man that has breath in his nostrils? God, not man, is my source. I pray that God will bring us to it. There's a, a place that I've gotten to now. There's a place that I, I, I've, I just studied my life recently and I discovered that's where I am now. When it comes to the area of finances, I never worry. Never. Those of you around me, you know. Never. Never. Because of money, I'll sit down and put my hand like this. When you should be meditating on the word of God, it's because of money. You sit down like this. Some of us here now, we are not even listening to the message. Why? You are thinking of how much, that bill, how much, how you will get money. And this is how you are thinking. You are already thinking of how you will borrow money from here and there. You see, you see, the, you see the mentality. With all due respect, some of us are here. You have even borrowed the money already. You are owing MTN now. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, God is my source. I cannot lack. God is my source. I shall not fail. That's it. You need to realize it. Realize that everything you have. The Bible says, can a man receive anything except it is given to him by God? So if you know that God is your source, remember I've taught you. That the source of a thing determines the sustenance. So if God is my source, if God is the source of this car, God himself will fuel the car. God himself will maintain the car. If God is the source of this relationship, God himself will give me peace. If God is the source of these children I have, the Bible says, I and the children that who? That the Lord has given me. If he gave you, he will keep them for you. Someone comes and threaten you with job. Threaten. There's a little shake in your place of work. No, 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 no. It's either it is time for God to promote you in that establishment or it is time for you to leave that place. You have dwelt on that mountain too long. 
You know what I hear a lot of people do these days, and I'm not against you know getting jobs and all of that. But you hear people saying, "This new job that I got is a federal government job. It's a government job. What's the difference between government job and other jobs? Pension, ba? How many pensioners have you seen living large? If you are looking for pensioners, go to the village. You see them there. They are there. Someone say, "Ah, I need to hustle this. I need it's a federal government job. Oh. Let me get so that there's nothing like job security. There's only God security. Let me tell you. When you live with the consciousness that God is your source, God can force an international organization to come to your territory because of you. Was he not here? Our brother was in one of our services. A job came to him there. But many of us run up and down pursuing mundane things. Things that have no way to define your existence. They now become your Lord. No, no, sir. No, no. God is my source. God is my source. He knows my name. He knows my every breath. He sees each tear that falls. I love this part. And he hears me when I call. The Bible says, even the hair on your head was numbered. He knows your name. Among over 8 billion people, he knows you. If he wants to reveal himself, he will reveal himself personally to you. He sees every tear. In fact, the Bible says he puts our tears in a bottle of remembrance. So that when he doesn't hear from you again, when you can't pray because there are too many problems around you, he listens to your tears. Oh, somebody didn't get that. Yeah. He knows. But this is the confidence we have in him. That whatever, whatever, whatever is whatever. Hello, English language. Whatever is what? Whatever. Whatever doesn't mean some things I will pray. This one big past me. Let me go to apostle. I'm not against... You know, going to submitting to higher authority or joining faith with others. But the Bible says, whatever we ask Him, there's no prayer God cannot hear from your mouth. Many of us live like second class citizens. You feel God doesn't hear you. And Satan has used that to manipulate your relationship with God. So much so that you don't even have faith when you open your mouth to make a request. But we have a father that sits in heaven. Come on, put your hand on your chest and say, I have a father. What is his name? Okay, his name is what he has revealed himself to you. What is his name? Some people, his name is El Shaddai. Some is I am. Some is Alpha Omega. Some who is God more than enough. For me, he is everything encompassing. That's who he is to me. Hallelujah. The consciousness of God, the Father as your source, and Jesus Christ as your Lord. Jesus Christ as your Lord. That you come to a point where you walk in this truth that Jesus is Lord. When you give your life to Christ, the prayer is usually that He becomes your Lord and Savior. At that instance, He becomes your Savior. But it takes a procedure of submitting to the government of God in your heart. Listen carefully now. Listen carefully. It takes a deliberate consciousness of submitting to the government of God in your heart. God being Lord or Jesus being Lord over your life does not happen at once. It's a life of complete consecration to Him. He becomes Lord means owner. The one who authorizes. 
that he becomes owner of my finances he becomes owner of my if he's owner of my finance it means there's nothing i can't give him when you used to have ten thousand twenty thousand thirty thousand fifty thousand you can give god anyhow the day hundred thousand entered your account And you see, sometimes some of those little breakthroughs in blessings, they come to actually test you. Then a day comes that God just opens a door. One million, five hundred thousand. And God will wait to see who truly is the Lord. Some of you, you will check your alert for the next three days. You'll be checking it every day. It just shows you that they are, they, they are, the money has become your Lord some people god bless them with a car every day they must look at the car they go to sleep they'll look at the car in the night they wake up instead of them to pray or even mention jesus no the first thing they'll do is open their window and check the car the car still there some of you may not have cars now but i hope that's not the heart you have that's what god is trying to confirm he must be lord over all when you were a single sister God had your time now that you are in a relationship <laughs> you know the way people just treat the way people treat the things that God gives them tells you if those things or God is the idol in their heart and the thing about this is that you can't deceive yourself it's it natural where your heart gravitates to is who is Lord over your life. The Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess what? That Jesus is Lord. God's desire is one day that everything he has created in heaven and on earth will ascribe obeisance to him. If Jesus is truly Lord over your life, we will see it in your obedience and your submission. Like Jesus who said in the garden, he said, not my will, but your will. When was the last time you prayed that prayer? Sincerely. When was the last time? Not my will, but your will. You go to pray and you say, I want to stretch for five hours today. Not because you have an intention of meeting with God. Oh. Let it just be that this thing that people are saying, I have done it so that me my can brag that's spiritual pride i hope you know it's pride with an s spiritual pride that's the kind of prayer you pray god will not even answer you god you you feel so dry as though you are in the wilderness and god is saying the day your heart conforms to be all about me that's the day we experience fellowship can't you just go and pray because you want to fellowship with god some of us disturb god with all kinds of needs there was a night i was praying and after a while i began to pray about needs and somewhere in the prayer i stopped i said wait oh so does it mean that i can't pray without asking god anything then i started repenting there should be time where you just spend with him for him you are that's why i said it starts with god being the consciousness of god being your source that i'm conscious that he is my source and he's my lord therefore my time belongs to him that God can interrupt your timetable for him. Everybody is going on leave from your office. Traveling here and there. You, your own leave. You are already thinking of how you travel to this place. Travel to that place and flex. And in that whole one month that you have, there is no budget or allocation of a retreat for God. Not even one or two days where you shut your phone, shut yourself indoors and just stay before him. Some of you, God has even blessed you. You can go somewhere, book a hotel or book a retreat center or somewhere and just stay with the Lord and lie down, worship him and tell him, thank God for the Highlander. But before you, I'm nothing. Thank God for ministry. Thank God my name is everywhere. But before you, when was the last time? I'm showing you the secret to power in this kingdom. Lordship. Lordship. Let God know that he owns everything about you. And he can come anytime and take him or take anything from you. 
when Job had all his cattle destroyed, everything destroyed, his children destroyed. The Bible says he shaved his hair and laid down and worshipped. He said, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When last did you get to that place? Because God took your cousin, you cried for one month. You beef God. Why did he take my cousin? Why didn't he heal my cousin? If he's your mother now, what will happen? Will he still be God? I'm talking about a God that is not only God when everything is calm, but a God that is also God and he remains Lord even when there is chaos. The, the psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Not because I have an uncle. Not because I have connections in the military. He said, but because you are with me. He didn't say because you would deliver me. He says, because you are with me. Because in Isaiah, it says, even when you go through the waters, it will not swallow you. When you go through the fire, it will not burn you. There are some problems that we should not pray away. With. They are there just for you to, to bring you to a place of consciousness that God is with you. So God will allow you to fail that exam and watch to see whether you will still raise your hand and give him glory. Jesus as Lord. Jesus. That as a minister, as a man of God, you don't go for ministrations because they invite you. You go because he sends you. Even when they bring limousine to carry you, you see the place you are going to, you know you get a fat honorarium. That kind of thing, even when God doesn't talk, you will hear God for yourself. And go. They send you an invitation, come and preach in South Africa. Or come and preach in London. Say, ah, this must be God. This must be God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. There are some, not every open door is from God. There are some doors that when they open, you need to tie your eyes with a blindfold. Hold the door and shut it. Not every door. Please be seated. Not every door. Jesus. From my heart to the heaven, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Number three. Walking in truth implies the lifestyle of integrity and verity integrity and verity let me show you one of my favorite scriptures psalms 19 from verse 12 to 14 integrity and verity in other words righteousness righteousness Walking in truth is when you cultivate a lifestyle of righteousness, of integrity, not double standards. A life of truthfulness. Psalms 19 verse 12. Are you there? Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me. Ah, I like this. These are the prayers you pray in your retreat. Eh? It's not only the sin that you know. There are some sins that the Bible calls secret faults. It's in your heart. Lost is already growing, but you don't know. Greed is already growing, but you don't know. How do I know it's greed? I look at your finance. I see what you give God and what you, you keep for yourself. I said somewhere, I, I said that your giving is determined or measured by how much is left when you have given, not how much you give. There are secret faults. 
snares of the enemy desires that creep into our heart the psalmist says cleanse me he said keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins in other words um, I presume too much like Saul wait for Samuel to come no he saw that the people were scattered around him and he said I forced myself to offer a burnt offering then he asked Samuel to come and so that Samuel can justify everything Samuel said to obey is better than to sacrifice it's not everything that we should ask for forgiveness there are some things that you should know and cautiously derail from the Bible says keep your servant from presumptuous sins let them not have dominion over me then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgress transgression verse 14 one of my favorite verses in scripture let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight oh lord first of all he says the words of my mouth then he went further he said even the meditations the thoughts some of you don't you know there are many christians who think they who who think god doesn't know what they think as a matter of fact god knows the thoughts before it comes into your mind and that's where god checks spirituality is not all this motion thing that we do ba -ba 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 -ba. somebody can fornicate and go and do that i hope you know when all of us come like this and we stand to pray god does not look at our mouth he doesn't look at the loudest prayer warrior there's nothing like prayer warrior before god god didn't make us to be prayer warriors God made us to be intimate with him. What are you worrying for? And I'm not in any way against spiritual warfare. I hope you understand what I mean. But that you now carve out a niche, a reputation using prayer. The Bible says we are the circumcision that trust that 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 that, 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 that worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. That my confidence is not in how loud I pray. Because when we begin to pray loud, God looks at the heart of everybody. And he looks for sincerity. After Sunday, how is your thought life? How is your meditations? What do you spend your mind pondering on? Because there are some people that can watch film from Monday to Saturday. Spend their thoughts on all kinds. Even when they go to sleep, they are thinking about the film. Then they now dream, and then the part that they forgot or the part that they left in the dream, they will now see themselves in the film. You know, they, they become so intimate with the film. I know somebody doesn't like why I'm I'll pound it until that thing lives your life. Psalms 1, verse 1 Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly stands not in the ways of sinners nor sits in the seats of scornful verse 2 but his delight the word delight is the word pleasure what gives you pleasure the bible says him his pleasure is in the law of the law and in it he doth meditate day and night that you come to a point where you are so in love with the ways of god that you can't help but pondering about him even in your place of work, you are doing something and you are thinking about the scripture. You become so intimate with God that your desire is just to always be with Him. You come to a point where you become so sensitive of His presence, even in a marketplace. Ask your neighbor, where is your desire? Because the road to your heart is your desire the bible says love not the world neither the things in the world because in any man love the world the love of the father is not in him i'm telling you the truth god will wait until your desire for these material things die before he gives it to you no matter how legitimate those things are no matter how much you justify your the reason why god should give you those things god will wait until the desire for those things die it is only when your desire for these things are dead that God can give you. Because it is a dead desire that can sustain what God has blessed 
or given to you with it says the light is in the law of the lord and in it he doth meditate day and night you wake up in the morning that's the first thing you think about that's what you are thinking about when you left your house not that you were thinking of how you quarrel somebody or thinking of how you go and hang out somewhere that's your obsession that's your thought I love Jeremiah he say I found your word and I ate them and they were the joy and the rejoicing of my heart Job chapter 23 he say your word became to me than my necessary food hey have you gotten to that point where you become so in love with the word of God you can forget to eat breakfast some of us will never reach there the moment you wake up from your bed you're on your way to your kitchen that's when you say thank you Jesus for seeing a new day then you go and warm the food of yesterday and then you are praying as you are warming the food I need to eat oh. may I not get us I need to eat oh. some of you wake up in the morning the first thing is your phone and then you notice that the phone is dead you wait inside of you to spend at least 30 minutes with God no you go out and you're looking for who is who will charge the phone say and they never open may they open and can't charge phone many of us live our lives in our phones our accessories some of you you have you have taught your life inside your job like you put butter inside bread and the, the, the funny thing is all these things God gave to us so it now becomes an insult to God that he didn't know what he was doing when he gave these things for your pleasure for your comfort the Bible says seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things it means walking in righteousness let me finish this point. Give us that verse 14 of Psalms 19. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. This is a life of righteousness. This is a man that will walk in the truth. This is a man that will walk in the consciousness of righteousness. That he, what he does, he does it not just to please people. But he does it looking at Jesus first as his audience. That's what we're discussing. That everything you say, think or do, you do it with the consciousness that Jesus is standing before you. Not because you want to please a man. We have too many men pleasers in church. That's why there's no power in church. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight at that point saying the truth is no longer hard for you saying the truth becomes what you do by default you know some of us maybe because we talk too much we are always talking and the bible says in the multitude of words sin is not lacking but you come to a a, a, a place where your life is all about integrity you are doing it not because of men you are doing it because of god joseph told potiphar's wife he said how can i do this wickedness before god it even mentioned the husband's name first you are a slave in a foreign land you are still mentioning god yes that's a lifestyle of integrity that's why when i hear i hear that there are pastors who eat church money i wonder because there's no money in church self to start with so and then me now open my stomach huh. is God your first audience in your office not your colleague is God your first audience in your family I tell you when you walk in this life of integrity and verity there are sometimes you will not even be bothered about defending yourself because you are so conscious that you walk in truthfulness and it's only a matter of time your deeds will reveal everything truth truth if we don't walk in a lifestyle of integrity and truthfulness 
There's no way society will be salvaged. There's corruption everywhere in all rankings of government. And most times, the corrupt people that they catch usually carry our name. Truth. And then finally, walking into truth implies intimacy with the word and the spirit of God. Intimacy. Intimacy. Above everything, that you live a life that consciously loves God and is at the attempt of always showing it wherever you go. How much of God you love will be determined by what consumes your time. Is it truly God you are pursuing or is what he can give you? If God doesn't give you a miracle, will you still follow God? Intimacy. Tonight I pray that God will soften our hearts and bring us to a higher place of communion with him. God wants to fellowship with us. Listen to me. God wants to experience fellowship with us. God wants a koinonia that will exist between us and him. There is a place where you can rise to in your walk with God where you become like a friend of God. Where you know God and he knows you. Where it is all about him and he is all about you. You become so in love with God that you are not ashamed of showing it. These things are fast, fast going out in the body of Christ. Simon, lovest thou me than this? I'm putting the question to us tonight again as we pray. Lovest thou me than this? Lovest thou me? When a man truly loves God, he's not afraid to go through anything as long as it will give God glory. When a man truly loves God, his service in the house of God is not for award. Huh? You know, men can award you. It is only God that rewards you. When a man truly loves God, he has, he has, he has quitted, you know, religious practices of trying to put up a show before people. It's no longer about people. When a man truly loves God and he sees that his prayer life is going down, he rushes back to the closet with, with urgency. Not because he's trying to save his face before men. But because there's a love affair that I must protect. I don't know about you, but I pray every day that God will plant his love in my heart. The truth is you can't really love God so much until he loves, he, he loves himself through you. You didn't get what I said. You can't love God so much except he loves through you. That's why the Bible says, draw me and we will run after you. Tonight is all about him. And we are telling God that we want to walk in truth. We want to be the people that truly pleases him. We want to be the people that the truth abides in and that abides with the truth. We want to be a people whose life are exemplary of the culture and the systems of the kingdom. We want to be Christ expressed on earth. If you are like that with me, can you just stand up and let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. One prayer you are going to pray. I will give you two minutes to pray that prayer. I want you to, from your heart, desperately and sincerely, surrender to the Lord. Tell him, Lord, all that I am and all that I have belongs to you. Help me. Help me to stay surrendered. That no idol will take your place in my life. Come on, you need to open your mouth and pray. These are prayers that stem from a heart of deep intimacy. A heart that truly pants for God and pursues God. Not a heart that is given to all of these mundane things. The Bible says all that is in the world passes away and it's lost. 
but I want to be one that does the will of God. Lift your voice and open your mouth. Make a surrender to Him. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Are you praying? Are you praying? Some of us, as you pray, many things, many things have been fighting to take the place of God in your heart. But this night, lay it all before him. Surrender before him. Surrender before him. Surrender that job, that house, that car, that wife, that relationship. Surrender those resources. Even the ministry he has given to you, the anointing, bless God, for surrender to him. Tell him, Lord, I am nothing without you. I have nothing outside you. I choose to remain only a steward. I refuse to take ownership. I declare that you are owner of all. I declare that you are Lord of all. Come on, somebody open your mouth and pray. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. I never knew when these things were taking a place in my heart. Some of you, even prayer, even prayer. Some of us fasting. Some of us are beginning to pray in our spiritual exercise. But God remains number one. God remains Lord. God remains everything. We choose to remain surrendered to Him. Come and pray, come and pray. For some of you as you pray, God is taking those idols away. God is taking away those idols. God is taking away those images. Those things that have been fighting to replace Him in your life. Say! Some is prayed and says, Search my heart and try me. Know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way. Where we read in Psalms 19, it said, Keep me back from secret faults. Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep me from presumptuous sin. And I don't get to a point where an idol begins to take the place of God. That I remain surrendered. I remain open-hearted before Him. It's not about ministry. It's about Him. It's not about people. It's about Him. It's not about what men call me. It's about what He says concerning me. Jesus said, I said to you, Rejoice not because the demons are subject to your name, but because your names are written in heaven. Because there is a testament of you in the heavens. In Jesus' name. Finally, I want us to pray and say, Lord, we have learned all that walking in truth implies. I want us to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace. Grant me grace. Walking in the truth of the revelation of who I am in you of my identity in you walking in the consciousness of God being my source Jesus being my Lord 
walking in the consciousness and the lifestyle of integrity and verity lord grant me grace give me grace the pressures of life at some point will want to force you to bend the pressures of life will want to force you at some point but father grace he says my grace is sufficient for thee my strength is made perfect in your weakness the lord even at breaking point let your love provide a restraint let your love provide a constraint in my heart a heart that is responsive to your will a heart that is responsive to the to truth a heart that is given to a life of truth and integrity not as men please us but to please the one who sits on the throne come and pray come and pray Come and pray tonight. God is challenging us. God is drawing us to a place of truth. A place of sincerity. It's a place of intimacy. He's about to take you into another level with Him. Your, lo your life is about to enter another experience with Him. Lord, the grace... desire tonight is that truly your pursuit is that truly your passion is that truly what you desire Jesus Lord open your mouth declare say bless of me voices I want more I want more of you oh, oh I want more of you I want more of you Jesus the more I know you say the more Tonight, God is restructuring our priorities. God is rearranging our desires. It has to be all about Him. Thank God for the miracles. Thank God for the signs and wonders. Eyes closed everywhere. Eyes closed. But never, never let those things take His place. 
never never be obsessed with your needs that you forget God seek ye first the kingdom it's all about him it's truly all about him he is the goal of our pursuit with or without these things we will still love him with or without these things we will still serve him make that a prayer in your heart make that a prayer in your heart say Lord restructure my desires rearrange my desires Thank you, Father. As you pray, let the Lord purge your heart. Let His love flow again into our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. While we all stand, let me do this and we'll be done tonight. We'll keep doing it every Sunday. The Bible says the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. I know that there must be at least one person or people here who don't know the Lord Jesus. Or may never have made a decision for him publicly maybe you come to church you live fine with the people around you but you don't know him truly as your Savior and your Lord why we all stand with our eyes closed wherever you are I want you to unashamedly walk to the front and I want to pray for you or perhaps you truly don't know where your life is with the Lord you used to love the Lord but you derailed several things eaten into your heart and have taken your desires for God away. And tonight you feel convicted by the message and you want to make your ways right again. You want to return back to him like the prodigal son returned back to his father. There is room for you tonight. Wherever you are, if you are in these categories, walk to the front quickly. I want to pray for you and we'll be done. While we are all standing and eyes are closed, let him be Lord over your life. Let him truly be Lord over your life. It's all about him. It's all about him. It's in him that you find peace. It's in him that you are truly secure. Ten more seconds if there are people coming out. Make that decision for Jesus. You have just ten seconds and then we'll be done. In the cross. In the cross. Be my glory. Lift your hands. Father, tonight we return to you in many ways. Search our hearts tonight. Purge us with your love again. Take away the idols. Oh, I sense the presence of God so strong. Take away the idols, the images, the things that have fought for your place in our heart. Rekindle the love, the fire, and the passion again in us. Help us to be a people that will walk in sincerity, in truth, in verity, in righteousness. A people that truly pleases you. Let our lives be that which flows from the revelation of the cross. Death to self. Alive in you. Thank you. 
Blessed be your name. Shall find rest beyond the reach. 